Imagine living in the late Middle Ages, perhaps in the beautiful city of Florence, in a public square on a Sunday morning. On one side, the local preacher is depicting the terrible punishment that await those who do not repent, those who do not fast in atonement, lost sheep to bring back into the rigid rules of Christian teaching. On the other side of the square, there's a jester, who is singing of knights and beautiful princesses, adventures and naughty stories of love and seduction. Who do you think would have more success in attracting an audience? This, of course, is a simplification, but for Christian preachers, the issue of how to win over an audience was surely a challenge. The key difficulty was to transmit a religious message while at the same time keeping the listeners interested enough to follow the words. When around the 13th century, theologians rethought public sermons, they gave new life to a genre called exemplum. Exemplum, or exempla in the plural, is a Latin word that means example, but it can be described roughly as a short narrative with a religious moral. These texts were first written in Latin, but soon also in Italian, French, and other languages. The intent was to create a short story in which something bad happened and only faith and prayer could save the protagonist. These are stories about everyday people, easier to identify with, and for us, an incredible insight into medieval society. Yet, if you are invested in capturing people's attention, daily life also needed to be interesting. And what is more effective than bringing marvel into the narration? Even literature, one could read about King Arthur or the marvelous adventures of Alexander the Great, Preachers could feature angels and demons in an eternal fight or even magic objects and complex illusions. There are thousands of such exemplars. Sometimes they're very similar, sharing ideas, places, or they differ only in small details. In my dissertation, I discuss many of them. So here I'll highlight some of the most significant. There are exemplars that remind us of um, fairy tales like Snow White. Once upon a time, there was an emperor who, after losing his first wife, marries a certain beautiful woman. She was, however, jealous of her stepdaughter that was deemed a prettier than her. In a fit of rage, the stepmother sends some servants into the woods to kill the young girl, beating her. However, they only cut off her hands, but do not kill her. The desperate girl prays to the Virgin, and she is saved by the son of a Duke, who eventually marries her. In the end, the young girl is awarded with new hands by God, while the evil stepmother is punished and killed. Another example tells the story of a man who was kidnapped and imprisoned. His wife, who believes the man to be dead, prays, pays the church for a weekly mass in his soul's honor. By miracle, Every week, one single ring of the chains keeping him captive was broken, one for each mass. After a year, the man is finally free and reaches his wife, who had shown great love and faith in their marriage. Other exemplars instead aim at scaring people and work out cautionary tales. There are several medieval accounts of travels to hell to see the punishment for the sinners. Differently from Dante's Divine Comedy, these descriptions insist on physical punishment, crude images, and terrifying demons often armed with pitchforks. One example, for instance, tells the story of a young woman who sees her father, mother, and brother eternally punished for being usurers. In another example, two monks see some demons on a river carrying the soul of a man who was believed to be a saint, while instead he was evil. Sometimes, a supernatural event will reveal God's judgment, giving sinners the chance to repent and change their lives. A farmer used to give almost all of his earnings to the poor. Scared of not having enough to sustain himself in old age, he stops donating money and keeps everything from himself. The man falls ill. He spends all his profits on doctors. But when his foot becomes necrotic, the only solution is amputation. The night before surgery, an angel appears, scolds the man for not relying on God's providence, and heals the farmer who can't go back 
to work and share his revenues again with the poor. Other examples argue that drinking too much wine and eating too much food makes even sinly men prone to sin, usually lust. Several examples focus on blessed objects, such as a painting of Jesus who saves a man from a storm at sea, or Mary's engagement ring, which brings uh, a man back from the dead. In others, a ritual gesture is central, such as the sign of the cross, which protects against evil. A pious nun forgets to perform the sign on the cross on the cauliflower she's about to eat, and through the vegetable, the devil enters her body. Now, this last funny story gives me the opportunity to mention my favorite kind of exemplar, the stories with a funny twist. Such is the tale of the talking head of a man who had been killed before he had the chance to confess. Or again, uh, a legend of St. Patrick tells the story of a man who complains that his sheep has been stolen. During Mass, the saint asks the sheep to bleed to show herself. Its verse rises from the stomach of a man who had just eaten the poor animal. But the weirdest and funniest of them is possib possibly the one that inspired the title of this talk, an exemplum featured in a manuscript here at Penn by the Kislev Center for Manuscript Studies. It is the story of a holy hermit who's tricked by the devil into accepting a rooster, so to be sure of waking up for the nighttime prayers. The rooster, however, starts cawing at all times in order to attract the attention of some hands. This doesn't help the hermit at all, for the rooster and his hands have an intense love life that distracts him from godliness. Finally, the devil finds the perfect solution. I will bring you an old woman, he says, so old she could be your grandmother, and she will pray for you and take care of the animals. The hermit, um, the hermit reluctantly accepts, fearing the temptations of the flesh. And it is indeed what happens. Next to the fire, the light shines on the old woman's legs, now magically young. Temptation wins, and he's ready to sin when everything disappears, and old demons yell his guilt mocking his lustful desire. The demons had taken the shape of the rooster, the hands, and the old woman to tempt the men, and they succeeded. Thousands of these exemplars, possibly written for preachers, became popular and were transcribed in many more manuscripts. The exemplum answers then preachers' two needs, teaching and entertaining. The role of the supernatural, as I've outlined, is both central and variegated. It can be used to scare the sinners or to praise the beauty of paradise. It can be a literary device to transform stories into adventures, or it can be the source of comedy to entertain an audience. The extraordinary events of the exemplum would allow preachers to give a religious message while captivating the listener's attention. For us, in 2021, these exemplars can teach much on themes such as gender roles, poverty, justice. They can describe the fears and hopes of medieval people, what they desired and what they were scared of. These exemplars can give us the impression, at least for a few minutes, of being in a medieval square of Europe, each listener next to each other, fascinating by these fantastic tales, all together once again seduced by the power of a good, old, marvelous story. <laughs>